find our way down onto our back. Lie back. If you have a block and a strap, you can take one block, place it between your inner thighs. You could also use a rolled up blanket or towel. It's really just to be a space holder. And then you'll strap around your legs to contain everything. So just having it fit so that everything's held, you're not having to use muscular effort to hold your legs. And then bring the back of your arms to the ground, elbows bent about 90 degrees. Soften your eyes closed. Feel that sense of settling, scanning from the bottoms of your feet to the back of your head. Notice the sensation of contact with the floor. So feeling any space in the body that's making contact. Noticing the spaces of heaviness where your body is settling into the ground. And then notice spaces of lightness where you might be holding yourself up, gripping in your body, tensing in your hips or your shoulders. Noticing the spaces between the back of the wrists and the floor, the back of the knees and the floor, back of the neck. And then just 10 more breaths here. open your eyes. Now, if you have enough blocks, you could leave this whole setup. Otherwise, take the block out from between your legs. You could leave your strap. We're going to set up for a supportive bridge. So a few versions. I like to use two blocks. One way to do it is to lift the hips. You might want to come onto the balls of your feet, and then you'll take your two blocks flat and wide. That's just going to give you a little bit of a higher and more supportive surface for your hips to rest on. And if you wanted to go higher, you could take your two blocks up. So take a moment to get yourself set well. Make sure that you feel stable. If you don't have blocks, you could place your pelvis up on a stack of pillows. It won't be as supportive, but at least it'll get your hips up a little higher. And then relax your arms to the ground again. You can come into that cactus position. You can grab one wrist or take opposite elbows. Or just simply rest your palms face up. Come back into a presence of your breath. As you watch your breath, notice your need to control it. So it's really hard when you start to pay attention to your breath to not move it in a certain way. And while that is one of our practices, observing without controlling is a whole other practice in itself. One of the hardest ones, if you ask me. So letting go of the need to control just a little bit. Watch the natural flow of breath coming and going. And then once again, counting out 10 natural easy breaths. When you reach the count of 10, come onto the balls of your feet and then push the floor away with your feet to lift your hips. Slide your blocks out and then before you lower your hips, bring your feet all the way to the ground. Tilt your pelvis, you're kind of sticking your butt out towards the ground. And then try and pull your heels 
back towards your hips as you set your hips down, keeping the curvature of your lower back. So you're not rolling down your spine. And then take a pause to let everything land on the ground again. Remove your strap if it's still there. Take the block off to the side and then slowly come over on to one side into a fetal position and bring yourself up to sit. We'll move ourselves over to the wall for legs up the wall and you can use props here or just simply bring your legs up. If you did not have a wall, you can place your legs up on a chair or a sofa. But if you do, it's really nice to actually get to the wall and I'm going to use my strap again. Place a folded blanket underneath my hips. You could use a pillow or a bolster or nothing. I just like to get the hips up a little bit. I'm going to place another blanket underneath my head just for soft padding. And then I'm going to use my sandbag. So everything else, I'm just go out of the way. Strap and sandbag over to the side so they're easy to access. And then I'm going to bring my side hip all the way up to the wall. Swing my legs up and come to lie down. If you are using anything that's higher than this blanket, like a bolster, it's much easier to slide the bolster underneath your hips once you're already on the ground. And so while I sat on the blanket and did this, you might do it on the ground and then lift your hips and slide everything into place underneath you. If you want to use a strap, place it around your calves this time. Make your strap about hip width, maybe wider, and then let your legs fall into the strap. So instead of squeezing them together, I'm letting my legs kind of hang out and be held. If you have a sandbag, place it on your feet and then bring it up. And then you might not even need the strap, but I like to have both. Once you're here, shift so that your seat is as close to the wall as possible. Everything feels really supportive. And then you'll bring your arms away from your body into any of those variations that really felt good for you. Close your eyes. And feeling all of the support again, the ground beneath you, the wall holding your legs up any other props that might be touching you. Just become present to all of those different little sensations, adjusting anything that needs to be adjusted so that you feel comfortable, safe, and held. Just watching the natural flow of your breath coming and going again. Noticing once more that need to control it, to make it deeper. See if instead, through the process of release and settling, if your breath will naturally become deeper on its own. We'll take one more minute here. Notice the sensation in your legs. If at any point that feeling of blood coming from your feet becomes uncomfortable, just bring your knees into your chest. As you're ready, start to slowly slide your heels down. Take your time, especially if you have that sandbag. Unhook your strap, move your sandbag off to the side. And then right knee's going to bend all the way down. Left leg will re-extend up the wall. And just place your right foot lightly against the wall as you interlace your hands on your right shin. Make a good contact with the sole of the right foot in the wall and then lightly press your foot into the wall. Take your hands behind your thigh, extend and bend your leg a couple times.
Right. And then place your right ankle on your left thigh. So this is a variation of figure four or pigeon. Press your ankle against your leg. Keep this foot a little bit flexed just to stabilize your knee. And then you might find that this is enough sensation in your hip. Otherwise, you're gonna start to bend your left knee and slide your left heel down. So this is one of the reasons I like to have a little bit of extra support under the hips. Your tail is going to curl up and then try and bring it back down towards the floor. So that may mean that you come out of the shape a little bit. Then rest your hands away from your body. On an exhale, slide your left leg out again to extend it. Pull your right knee back into your chest, hands behind your thigh. Straighten and bend the knee. And then take your leg towards straight. It doesn't have to be all the way straight. You're going to point and flex your right foot. Point your toes, make circles with your right ankle. And the other way. And then flex your foot, reach up through your heel as you try and pull your butt bone down. So you again move from end to end. Try not to put a lot of effort into the upper body here, just a gentle stretch. And bring your right leg back to the wall. And bend your left knee, slide your left foot down, interlace your hands on your left shin. Lightly press your left foot against the wall and just notice those little subtle shifts and how they affect the sensation in your hip. Right, take your hands behind your left thigh, extend and bend your left leg a few times. And then place your left ankle over your right thigh so you come into that figure four position. Flex your left ankle. It's going to give you more stability and strength in your knee. And then you can stay as you are here or start to bend the right knee. And so just notice if you really come into the shape where you're pushing through your low back and your hips are off of the floor, come out of that and try and let your hips settle back down towards the ground. And keep pressing your left ankle against your leg as you use the leg to move the knee towards the wall instead of pushing with your hand. Let your eyes close. Notice where you feel sensation in this shape. If your breath becomes short or full of effort, come out of this position and just extend your legs. Straighten your right leg. Take your hands to the back of your left leg, drawing your knee back into your chest. Straighten and bend the knee. Straighten out your leg, point and flex your foot. Don't worry if the leg doesn't come fully straight. Try and reach up through your heels. And just, instead of straightening the leg by locking the knee, think of moving your sitting bone and your heel in opposite direction. And bringing the foot either towards the wall or towards your body, depending on how much sensation you really want today. Place your leg back on the wall. Bend your knees again and set your feet to the wall. If you have something underneath you, go ahead and slide it out of the way and off to the side. Bring your hips back down to the ground. Come into a twist from here. Bend your knees so that your knees come to your chest and your feet are on the wall. And then you're just going to slide your feet over to one side. So bringing your knees over towards your right elbow and turn the gaze over your left shoulder. Just finding a gentle twist in your spine. On an exhale, bring yourself over to the other side. So knees come towards the left elbow, head gazes over towards the right shoulder. Roll yourself all the way over into a fetal position. And when you're ready, slowly come on up to sit. We'll finish in a supported version of child's pose. Take a couple blankets or pillows, whatever you have. 
set them on your heels and sit on them. So give yourself a little throne, bring your knees apart. So you create a triangle now between your pubic bones and your knees. Grab anything you have to support your chest. So if you have blocks, you can use blocks. You could put a bolster or a pillow here. I'm just gonna do two blocks for today in a similar way that we set up for pigeon pose. So one block underneath the chest, one block underneath the head, and then comment to settle into that shape. So you might notice as I come into this, I'm not in as much of a slope, but rather on a pretty even plane in my upper body. If your hands or your shoulders don't comfortably come down, you can always place more support there. And then if you do have a sandbag, it's really nice to take that sandbag and place it on your back and place it right on the hips, or you can slide it right behind the ribs, wherever you feel like you want a little bit of extra weight and heaviness. If this is still really intense on your knees or your hips, just keep stacking blankets and pillows under your seat. If you don't need the block under the head, you can slide it out, bring your forehead to the ground. And we'll take two more minutes here. So settling in, eyes closed, noticing again the natural movement of your breath. Soften the space between your eyes. Separate top and bottom jaw, allowing your lower jaw to be heavy, your tongue to fall away from the roof of your mouth. Count out your last 10 breaths. When you finish counting to 10, slide your hands back underneath your shoulders. Slowly lift your head and bring yourself up to sit. You can just let that sand back slide off of you. And take a moment to sit upright on your throne of blankets, on your pillows, feeling your crown elevate back up towards the sky above you as you stay rooted to what's beneath you. Take an inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Lightly seal your lips, flutter your eyes open. Thank you so much. Rest well.